Hello, everyone, and welcome to Viking Virtuoso Virtual Training. This is your moderator, Margaret McSweeney, and I'm so glad you're joining us today. Before we begin the presentation, a few housekeeping items and introductions. Please remain on mute during the call. If you have questions, please utilize the chat function during the training. All questions will be answered at the end of the training presentation. For your information, we will be recording this training session. Now for the introductions. First of all, Thomas Lucas. He is the Senior Industrial Designer at Viking Range. Sue Bailey is the Director of Go-To Market Strategy at Viking Range. Nicole Cooper is the Showroom Manager at Middleby Residential's Irvine Showroom. Jamie Larita is the executive chef and brand ambassador for Middleby Residential Chicago Showroom. And Jackie Rothong, the executive chef and brand ambassador for Middleby Residential's New York Showroom. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Virtuoso training. I am so excited to be the featured recipe today. I am, usually we are in Chicago. Today we are in upstate New York and I have actually whipped up something super delicious and very classy, which is exactly what I think of when I think of the Virtuoso line. Um, it's kind of sleek and sexy and it fits in perfectly and seamlessly into any kitchen. Uh, and that's kind of why I picked out this platter. It reminds me of how beautiful the Virtuoso is. So let's quickly talk about the recipe, which all of you guys are going to be getting at the end of this training. Um, so I did a little garlic toast and I made, I just took actually some ricotta, some whole milk ricotta, and I added lemon zest to it. It does wonders to it, brightens it up, and takes away all of that like kind of heavy fat, whole fat milk that's in there. Um, I did a little um, garlic on the garlic toast and um, I made broccoli rabe. So one of my favorite things is broccoli rabe. It tends to be a little bitter. We are going to top all of this bruschetta with a little bit of broccoli rabe. And you can chill this as well if you wanted to. And it's kind of exactly how I think about the virtuoso. It's perfect for entertaining. And it's something that's elegant and simple but upscale and on a different level. And now we're just gonna shower it with a little bit of Pecorino Romano cheese, or a lot. I like to make it rain with my Pecorino and all of my cheese. And then we are gonna start this training. So I'm gonna pass it along to Sue. Thanks guys. Thank, thank you, Jackie. That looks beautiful. And you can never have too much cheese, can you? No, never you have too much cheese. <laughs> Good, hey guys, thanks for joining us today for Virtuoso. Um, as you guys know, we, I say this, I think every time that we meet is that, you know, we are the originators of the professional um, ranges and products for the home. It's where we started in the eighties. And then for those of you that have been with us for quite a while, you'll know, we introduced the designer line as kind of our answer then to something that was just not professional. That was, you know, a little softer, um, a little lighter. And then we began to realize with the influx of several competitors into the market and just the way kitchen design had been going that there was a need for something else. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pass it off to my friend Thomas, who is our senior industrial designer. And between him and Jamie, they're going to talk. Thomas is going to talk about the line and how we kind of got where we are with it. Jamie's going to talk about the design and how it fits in. And then for whatever time we have left, guys, we'll quickly go over the products that are, that are in the line. So, Thomas, I'm going to throw it to you. Thomas? There, All Thomas. right, so we're, you, we're waiting. No, we can't now. I couldn't Perfect. find Thomas. I'm here. There we Sorry. go. Go. <laughs> All right, so Virtuoso is our entry into the contemporary market. Uh, what we wanted to do was take the same Viking look, Viking feel, good, strong presence in the kitchen, and bring it into a more contemporary or transitional style. Uh, and what we've really picked up on is that contemporary design is becoming more the rule rather than the exception. Uh, where in the past pro was the rule and contemporary was the exception. So this is really our first solid entry into it. And I'm looking forward to pushing this line even further into the future. So Jamie. 
Yeah, so Thomas, this, yeah, so this is definitely a, um, a really unique call for Viking. When people come into the showrooms and they expect to see, you know, the uh, classic Viking look. And then when it comes to design, looking at Virtuoso, there's always that like really great uh, wow factor, especially with it in all black. I think having it being so uh, integrated and sleek, I call it the Batman oven. Um, customers and consumers don't really expect it, Thomas, when they come in and it really gives Viking a whole new energy when it comes to design. You know, people are, are looking at other brands like maybe um, that look like this and that they, they don't expect to see it from Viking. So the inspiration behind, you know, the, the line is, is obviously, you know, the futuristic look of it. What's coming down the pike? Can you share anything at all? So, Sam, we want to push the, the contemporary side harder. Yeah, and, and the contemporary market is, is very, very tight right now. Uh, and that's where we want to make a presence. You know, as far as I'm concerned, from a design standpoint, we have the pro look nailed. We've had it nailed for years. Where we need to focus is the contemporary side. So that's where you're seeing, you know, we're, we're looking at different handle styles, uh, the all glass, all black glass look is something we want to push even harder and really tighten up and tone the, the design and install these products uh, to be a lot more contemporary because you really, when you look at a contemporary kitchen, it's a lot of straight lines, a lot of very clean, tight details, and that makes your product, you know, your product has to adapt to that and has to stay with that aesthetic and be just as clean and just as tight. So from a fit and finish standpoint, you know, we're taking what we've learned from the pro side and pushing it even further. And then on the pro side, we're actually taking aesthetics and details that we've learned from the virtuoso and the contemporary side and applying that to our pro side to make it more, uh, I'd say more modern, to where you still have that tough pro look and pro feel, but it's a cleaner product overall. Yeah, the handle really does. I can see the handles in those pictures. I have the handle, um, both of those looks in the showroom and designers love it. Um, I know you have some exciting things in your office coming down the pike that you're, you can't share with us, but a little bird told me that we have some exciting things potentially happening in the future. Absolutely. Always. That's what we do here. We, uh, we want to uh, set the stage and, and set a taste uh, rather than, than playing follow the leader. So we've got some absolutely interesting things coming uh, and everything you know, new more or less at this point is related to uh, Virtuoso. You know, we want to serve gear. So the next step for us is to really focus on Virtuoso and build our contemporary and transitional lineup to be just as powerful and just as bold as our pro line. Well, we're very excited to see the futuristic and the future of Virtuoso. I know you're very excited about it every time I talk to you about these things, but designers are loving the clean, modern, integrated look. So we're going to throw it back to Sue. Thanks. Hey, just real quick, guys, before we leave this slide, because Jessica did such a good job on this. Thomas or Jamie, do you guys want to talk for just a second? The difference for those of us that are not as design oriented as you guys are, the difference between transitional and, and contemporary, because I know that's a little bit of a different feel in, in the kitchen, correct? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, yeah, so go ahead, Thomas. Go ahead, Thomas. So from the uh, transitional side, you're, you're really blending contemporary and classic, right? So it may be more of a classic kitchen where it's not as clean and sterile as a pure contemporary kitchen. You want a little, a little softer feel, a little more, you know, homey feel to it. That's part of the round, uh, the round handle of the stainless trimmed Virtuoso comes in. It still kind of feels pro. It feels it has that stainless steel look and feel to it, but it's you know, not as clean and sleek as the black glass. Where you get the black glass, you get that clean, sleek. Uh, rectangular handle that just it kind of it, when you look at it it's just a flat line right it's purely 2d almost from the front and gives you very little uh very little form factor because it's you usually always see it flush mounted into the wall so it's just mm -hmm. really clean and black cabinetry or uh paired with a glass door uh on the refrigerator glass panel like jamie has in the showroom it really cleans the whole look of the kitchen up and makes it super super clean so that's kind of the main, the main delineation there is the transitional kind of marries classic and contemporary. And then the contemporary style with the, with the rectangular handle is just straight to the contemporary side, super clean, super minimal. 
Great. Jamie, you want to add anything to that? No, I think he covered a lot of it. But um, yeah, on the contemporary side, you know, the real true contemporary kitchen is seamless and extremely clean and almost like has a lot of, um, you know, just just elegant and modern feel. And I feel like this, especially in all black, really both, but the all black model um, surprises everyone because it's not typically something that they're expecting from Viking. But I think Thomas covered it pretty well. And guys, I think it's a great question that just came up in the chat is um, the handle up top is not a champagne finish. It does look beautiful. Um, it is stainless steel. Um, so yes, I, Thomas does know that we get lots of requests for <laughs> a, a, a light brass or a champagne finish. They are both truly stainless steel um, handles, yeah. as you can see in the full picture. So great question there. So having done that, let's jump into uh, the products that we have. We'll kind of Thomas and, and Jamie and Jackie, I'll just kind of be ready. I might throw you guys a question here and there as, as we're going through it. So Nicole is in our um, Southern California showroom, which as you guys know, she is with my favorite piece ever, which is are the induction cooktops. Um, this particular induction cooktop is the one that I have in my house. Um, Virtuoso is wonderful for a lot of reasons. In just a few minutes, Nicole's going to show us how we've got them installed, but let's just talk about the product for a minute. What I love most about these is that they have easy to use touch controls. So Nicole is going to turn it on for us so that we can see. Easy to turn on, then she's going to turn on and with the touch of a finger, very easily, maybe. There we go. It slides up and down. Now, here's what is funny. Guys, I have one of those fingers that doesn't have good circulation in it. And so it is a little bit harder for me to actually use the touch control. I have to make sure my fingers are not cold. But this is great. Slides up and down. She did put it on P. P, guys, is for that power boost. That means in just a matter of a few minutes, that water is going to come to a full rolling boil. It adjusts very easily up and down. If you'll adjust that down for me just a little bit, um, Nicole, also just so then kind of see. Easy, easy. Leave that there. If you'll remove the pan for just a second from there, I want them to see what happens when we remove the pan. So when the pan comes off, it's going to just make this little flashing, okay? That basically just says, hey, there's no contact there. If you were to put a pan that doesn't actually work, with induction, that's exactly what you would see when the pan gets put on there. Thank you, you can put that back. Um, so you've got the 30 mod, the 30 inch model has a nine inch, two eighths and a seven inch element. It's got 3,700 watts of power. Guys, and I don't think I mentioned this before, but the 36 inch model has an 11 inch element with 5,500 watts of power. Talk about bring, being able to, to bring something to a boil quickly. That will absolutely bring something to a boil quickly. Now the thing, other thing that I love about mine is um, we're going to show you how to use the timer because um, it's something that a lot of people don't know how to do. So to use a timer, all you have to do is push the up and down arrow at the same time. Timer's going to come up and then she's going to take the arrow to put it up. And then after about a six second delay or so, it is going to start and it's going to count down for that. Now you can use that as a standalone timer. If you're not using any of the elements at all, let's say you have something in your um, oven or someplace else, then you can use that as a standalone timer, or you can use it as a timer up to four different elements. So if I've got four things cooking on the elements, it will do four independent timers. To get between the timers, you just have to push the arrow button and it will flick between the timers. So kind of a neat little piece that the other um, induction cooktops or ranges we have don't actually have. So that is a, a great, great piece to have in there. There is also a child lock. I will not make Nicole do the child lock, but there is a way if you press lock and pause simultaneously, that will have the child lock come on. So your children cannot make any of those um, touch controls work so it's just a great and i think it's going to go off we're gonna we're gonna wait let it go off i think it beeps doesn't it beep we're gonna find out hang on flashes there we go this one actually flashes no audible sound so nicely done um nicole's gonna back up just a little bit to show you how this one's installed this one is installed just sitting on top of the countertop thank you nicole uh, sitting on top of the countertop so you can see how thin that glass really is. And it just sits so very pretty on top of that countertop. 
Thomas, do you want to talk for just a second about this install versus the flush one that um, Nicole's going to show us over on the other cooktop? Sure. I mean, it really just the install is, is up to personal preference. So the glass and the frame underneath it are so minimal that when you do install like this, you know, on a black top especially, it's very, 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 very clean. And it's a very straightforward and simple install. If you want to go even further, it requires a little more effort on your on your cabinet uh, maker's part from the countertop because you've got to route out the countertop. But it's a fairly simple process. We have all that you know, detailed out in the install instructions. And then when you do flush mount it on a black countertop, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's just super clean, super easy to clean too. So in my view, it's worth the extra effort from a usability standpoint to go ahead and flush mount the unit into the, into the countertop and it's, it's, like I said, easy to clean, it looks beautiful, and it's yeah. just purely contemporary from that standpoint of being a very minimal install. And almost, if you have a black countertop, you usually lose it within the, you, know, you don't really yeah. see it in the kitchen. Nicole, is your other one flush installed behind us? There we go. And see how nice that they did that. Um, Thomas, you want to talk just a little bit about, you mentioned it, but the silicone, how you're going to have to make sure that it is, you have to have a good countertop installer to do it. Look how flush that is. That is just amazing. Right. Right. And you'll basically, you'll, you'll take the unit and the counter, uh, countertop post will route out the inside mm -hmm. and it'll leave a little shelf in there. So then what you do is then drop the unit in, make, make sure the depth and everything's correct. And then once it's in and set, you would go back and seal it with a silicone around the edge. And that's what really makes it super easy to clean is that you have yeah. no what we call crumb catchers, right? So these little yeah. gaps that can catch catch food particles in the debris, and you literally can just wipe the entire surface down. Yeah, and how beautiful it is that reflection of the tile that Jamie picked out in the in the cooktop. It just makes for such a beautiful piece. So I love that. Oh, yeah. Great. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the ovens. So we have single and double ovens. Um, and look how beautiful that is. Triple stacks, guys, I love a triple stack. I just think you get so much product in such kind of a small area in there. They did such an excellent job on the install of that. Uh, one thing I do always like to mention, you do have to have about two inches of space between the products, um, which is what they have there, and just because of the venting that you need. But it is a beautiful, beautiful look to see all that. We're going to cover the steam oven and the warming drawer in a minute. But let's start with the ovens, guys. These are a great oven. Biggest difference between this oven and all the rest of the ovens that we have is the touch control that is on this. Um, Nicole's going to turn it on, but Thomas, do you want to talk just a little bit about the user interface and, and why that's, in, not why it's important, but what you're looking for as a designer? Yeah, so the, the biggest thing is we want a clear, concise, you know, easy to read interface. And uh, this one is, is kind of born out of our turbo chef we kept we kept a lot of the same architecture from turbo chef um, and this is one of the big things that we want to push forward to in the future with, with virtuoso is the user interface how do we make it to where you know it almost disappears when it's not being used and then when you are using it it's very clean and very concise so that's one that's kind of the big thing with ui design is that you, the, the customer should never have to hunt for anything it right. should all be right there, readily available, and ready for them to use. Yep. And, and that is something I know that you have been working on a lot is user interface, um, because that is what the customer deals with all the time, correct? Right. And it's, it's really a big part of contemporary design, and it, especially just today's world, you know, everything is a screen nowadays. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah. we're coming from a product that's largely analog with our Pro Series products. Yep. So going into this temporary market where it's largely a digital interface, you don't have knobs, you know, and creating this clean, concise, easy to use display is quite the challenge. I mean, it's it's a huge, uh, a huge project and a huge undertaking because it's it's so involved and so everything down to the font, you know, the font size, yeah. the font turning, the lettering, every every little detail of this is gone over and over and over to where we get. Yeah, you know, a beautiful, clean, easy to read user interface. And that's what we want. That's, we want this thing to be intuitive to where you don't need to pull out your manual and go step by step on how to set bake. You know, it's, it right. should be straightforward and easy. Anybody that knows that you're using the app, you know within yeah. the first five minutes whether or not you're going to like that app or not. 
And this exactly. is the same principle here. And, and I think that, you know, remembering that our demographic, the, the Viking demographic, typically has been, you know, that slightly older customer. This, it is very easy to read. It's very easy to use. Nicole, I'm going to get you to go back over there and just let's show them real quick. Um, you know, if she hits bake, she tells it to bake. Um, she can hit the temp button and then change the temp. She can plug in whatever she wants to with an enter. And then um, the time's unavailable right now. She could do, oh, you have the probe in. That's why the time not available. So she had stuck the probe in. Um, so that, that allows her to set the probe temp to whatever temp she wants to set the probe to. Um, so very easy to use. That was the most important thing to us was that it was it does have the probe but guys it has nine oven features which include self-clean so you've got bake convection bake true convect convection roast the high medium low broil and convection broil so all those features that we've talked about before um you have in this oven now this is the one oven guys that does not use that eight and a half inch bi-directional fan that we use on the rest of the electric oven cavities this one is different this oven cavity had to be different because we wanted the ability to flush mount it. The other oven cavity that we use in the Viking 5 and French store oven is too deep. We were not able to do that because of the convection fan. So this guy still uses a wonderful two-speed convection fan. It's still multiple rack bakes well. It does all those things that the other one does just using a different convection system, okay? Inside that oven cavity, thank you, Nicole, you've got the true glide rack which of course are very important to have. There's two of them in every oven. So nice. We talked about the meat probe. It does have the meat probe in there. It also has some other functions, guys. There's, you know, a hundred minute timer. You can set the cooking time for up to 12 hours as a delay if you wanted to do that. Um, so just some really, really good features in there. And they are all the extra large self-clean oven which is very, very important. So, oh, and you can kind of see the broiler there. Um, just a great little 10 pass broiler that we have. Um, so it does a great job on your steaks and chickens and other things that you would want to broil. Excellent, thank you. So now the steam oven, which is sitting right above there. Um, it is a, guys, this is such a great oven and it's so great that we're going to actually do a full training on it. I think it's the end of August. Um, it's got a great display, but I am not going to do it near as much uh, justice as Jamie will, because I know, Jamie, you are loving this product, aren't you? I am. You know, it's hot and steamy here in Chicago, Sue, but what's <laughs> really hot and steamy is that little steam oven. I think it's one of the most underestimated, like, in my own opinion. Like, I've really not paid too much attention to it um, in mm -hmm. the showroom, but now that I'm here, I have to tell you, the results from cooking alone in this thing are incredible. I did some... Uh, some salmon and I did some vegetables uh, and I roasted and I grilled and saut sauteed in it. This, this little oven is a fierce product and I think it deserves a lot more attention, especially from me than I've been able to give it. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful product. I can't wait to do the demonstrations that I'm doing right now on them. Um, yeah. A great, great product. And it is definitely a big, uh, product these days. You know, a lot of people talk about steam ovens and our little steam yeah. oven is just fierce. Yep. Great. Nicole, that's where you put the water in. Nicole, push one of the buttons up top. I just want them to kind of see that display a little bit more. Just pick one. And then, um, yeah, so it's so, so notice that it's just so easy to, to pick what you want. Then it's, yeah, whatever. So then it yeah, tells you to press start to preheat. It's just such a great, easy to use, Jamie. So easy to use, and I love that it's got that full color uh, touch navigation display control. Um, mm -hmm. if for people that you know really like to follow recipes, this gives you the ingredients list, the nutritional facts, and I understand Sue. How many recipes are actually in this in this oven? Is it? Oh 38? my gosh, I'd have to. It's a lot. Um, I can't because it yeah. comes with the digital cookbook in there, and it's so so easy. Um, and again, this you know this fits to that customer who wants to be more contemporary, right? They love the touch screen. They like the pictures. They need a little more help with it. Um, so it's just, it is great. I, I am looking forward to that training that you're gonna do on that. And baking in it, baking in it alone, as yeah. you can see as Nicole uh, scrolls through all of the different options, so many people don't realize that this combination steam oven is able to do like convection broiling and baking 
and even even a gentle steam um, yeah. and a pure a pure steam um, option. The steam roast is my favorite. You can get up to 485 mm -hmm. degrees from the top, middle, wow. and lower backside of the oven. It's pretty intense, and for a little oven. Um, it sure gives you so many different options to cook and so many things. Excellent. Well, we'll save some more of that for next time. We'll go on to um, the warming drawer. So if you'll back up just a little bit, um, Nicole, for me, you get the warming drawer down here, guys. We've talked about the warming dra drawer um, from the pro standpoint. Basically, same warming drawer, guys. It just has the great virtuoso look. Um, as we open it up, you do have the digital control, which is over on the other oh. side. Don't have to worry about going to it, Nicole. Um, and it's, it's so easy to use. You've got the meat probe. So if you want to do some slow cooking in there, you can with the meat probe. It's got the four hour automatic off unless you put it in Sabbath mode. So that's another great thing that it has. There's a one, two, and three as far as a number on there with one being 120 degrees, two 185, and three the 250. Also has the proof setting already in it. Very, very easy to adjust. There is a timer. Um, and guys, that, that heavy duty drawer glide will hold up to 200 pounds. So um, there's, there's nothing too big to go inside that will fit in the drawer inside there. Um, it is available in the stainless steel and in the black glass. I want to stop and take just a minute now if you'll shut that drawer for us, Nicole. Thomas, you and Jamie, let's talk a little bit about a standard mount versus a flush mount that we're able to do in this line. You want to go first, Thomas? Yeah, so with Virtuoso, we, you know, we wanted to, we had to solve the problem of how do you integrate this into a kitchen? The path we chose is to create a mounting system to where you do a full cutout like you would for a flush install and then you set your stays or your stops in the back on to what depth so if you want seven eighths of an inch you set your depth your stops corresponding to your cabinet face if you want a pro install you would do a normal installation without a full cutout or out a full full width cutout rather um, mm -hmm. and then install the product and you get your pro pro uh reveal for the front so it's yeah. consistent with french door uh five series single and double ovens. And if you want to go completely flush, you just move your stops back to a certain depth and you can flush the unit completely into the cabinet like Jamie's showing you here. So beautiful. So beautiful. So Jamie, as a, as a designer, are you typically doing these flush install or does it just depend on the client and the cabinet? I think you're right on, on the second uh, point there, Sue. It really depends on the cabinet and the client. I think that a client that really wants that very, very modern, clean look does it the way we've done it in the showroom. I have to say, look how, look how flush oh my we gosh, have yeah. it here. I mean, so that is flush. super, super clean. But yeah, it really depends on the design, right? It really depends on the client and what they want the look to be. We get a lot of clients here in Chicago and that's why we did it this way. Um, so you can show just how flush we can get it. And that's dead on, spot on flush right there. I just love that. That is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So um, just real quick guys, cause I can see we're almost out of time. The other products in the line, you've got the hood, um, 36 inch with some black glass. Don't forget about all the built-in refrigeration, seven series. You've got the 36 inch bottom freezer, the all fridge and the all freezers. Um, each that has the round handle as far as the round virtuoso handle that we have on it there um there's also a dishwasher door panel um a lot of these kitchens will do what jamie did there which is the full overlay door panel um, but there's also a virtuoso with the round handle uh door panel i did notice that um i think it was vaughn asked about the squared off handle guys we do have three accessories um we have the 23 inch round handle that, that's the stainless and black handle that will work on a dishwasher but then for refrigeration, we have the round and the square handle, okay? There's two different ones. They're 33 inches long. So if you're doing a, your own wood panel and you wanted to do the square handle, you could do the square handle. Is that what you did there, Jamie? Yes, I did. Beautiful, beautiful. So you take your great mirror and then able to see that handle going on there from that. Um, so nice to, nice to do there. Excellent. I can show you the so you round handle. The, yeah, please. And there's the round handle. 
so excellent. Very nice. So again, and guys, you know, the, the part of the reason too, we went with what I call a towel bar handle is it, it's just a little, um, it's a little more, what's the word? Um, I guess transitional, but also it, it goes with other things in the kitchen, right? Because with the seven series refrigeration, you can hide it. It doesn't have the Viking badge on it like everything else does. So this handle from a virtuoso standpoint allows us to work in, in so many different kitchens um, from that from that area. And we are just about out of time. Jamie or Thomas, anything you guys want to add that, that we didn't cover? No, that pretty well, much covers it for me. Of, yeah, I can't think Good. of anything other than I can't wait to show you guys how to cook in this little thing. Yes, and, and right below that, Jamie, let's look at that black glass oven for just a second while we're there. Um, so that's the full black glass single that's been installed nice and flush and a beautiful piece of marble from there. So excellent. Thomas, anything from you? No, that, that's pretty much covers it for me. All right, so Margaret, I think we'll pass it back to you. Well, thank you so much, Sue, and thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, please make sure to catch Chef Jamie and Chef Jackie on Vikings Facebook Live for amazing cooking videos. And also please um, make sure to tune in for our next Viking virtual training on Thursday, August 13th at 3 p.m. Central Time. This will be about Viking under counter refrigeration and ice makers. Look for a follow up email with assets from today's training as well as Jackie's bruschetta recipe. And a reminder that we are hosting virtual showroom appointments out of our Chicago and Irvine showrooms. Visit our websites or talk to your Middleview Residential District sales manager for more information. This concludes our training today. We'll remain on the call to answer any questions that you may have asked in the chat. And Sue, I think you covered everything. Well, I think I've got one. Daniel did ask that since Sharp is discontinuing their version of the steam oven, is there any changes to ours? And there's not. They will continue to make this piece for us. Um, and so we love it. Um, guys, remember, we do make it in the virtuoso version and in a pro version. So there are the two different handles that are there. And Maria, thank you for letting us know there's 58 preset cook options on that steam wow. oven. So yeah, that's awesome. So guys, thanks again, as always, for taking time to be with us and we'll talk to you guys in a couple weeks. Bye all. Bye all. Thanks. Thanks, bye. Toodles.